I want to talk today about class three malocclusion. <clears throat> that is when the lower jaw is in front of the upper jaw and the lower front teeth are in front of the upper front teeth. I was taught at university um, that this is inherited and affects about 5% of people, perhaps a bit less. Anyway, um, I had no reason to doubt that at the time, but later on I developed the tropic premise, which says that if the tongue is on the palate, the lips are sealed, and the teeth are ne in contact or near contact, then the growth of the jaws will be perfect. And this didn't really answer why some people had class 3 malocclusion. Anyway, later on, I was doing some research with a doctor in America, in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, he, Dr. Bill Runyon, his name was, um, and I used to uh, consult with patients. And then we would go into his office where we would um, discuss the case with their parents. <coughs> on this occasion, it was a young girl, about seven or eight years old, who was there with her mother and her grandmother. And Dr. Runyon started by explaining what the class three malocclusion was, when her mother interrupted him and said, yes, I know, I have the same myself. And she pulled back her lips to show that, yes, she had a class three malocclusion too. And at that point, the grandmother interrupted as well to say, yes, so do I. And she pulled back her lips to show that, yes, indeed, she also had a class three malocclusion. Now, I remember very clearly that at that point, Dr. Runyon picked up the notes and looked a little puzzled and said to the mother, but I see your daughter is adopted. That had a huge impact on me and my thinking. I realised, for the first time perhaps, that maybe class three malocclusions were just a question of an adopted posture. Many children will adopt the posture of their parents, the way they walk, and other factors as well. Anyway, I thought I should research this. So back in England, I collected a group of class three malocclusions <coughs> and I created what I call a pearly wire, which is a wire which runs from the back of the stage one expansion appliance forward along each corridor and drops down so that it lies just in front of the lower gum in front of the lower incisors, so that the child cannot push their jaw forward without it touching, even one millimetre. Um, the wires are removable so that they can eat with the appliance in, um, but they are asked to wear the pearly wire all the time, especially when talking. Quite remarkably, I found that this was able to avoid class 3 malocclusion, and in young children, revert them to class 1 malocclusion in almost every case. Now, that made me explore the actual posture of class 3. <clears throat> Most people, as you know, keep their tongue touching their teeth, although some um, uh, keep the tongue on the palate, as I suggest they should but others will keep their tongue low in their mouth, lying in the floor of the mouth, with the tip of the tongue often touching the lower incisors. Now, if you do this now yourself, and open your mouth two or three millimeters, maybe a bit more, with your tongue touching your lower incisors, you'll find you are slightly more comfortable if you hold your lower jaw forward one or perhaps two millimetres. 
Now, many people think that is too little to make a difference. But remember, if your mandible is held forward all the time, the condyle will grow back into the socket to establish its correct position. And this, in effect, lengthens the mandible. Now, this clearly provided me with an explanation of why class 3 malocclusions exist and indeed how they work. M mostly uh, the people who have class 3s now have surgery at the age of 18 to correct the shape of the mandible. They cut a section out of it, bolt it together and move the mandible back inside the um, upper jaw. But this is quite a traumatic operation and inevitably, I find, the faces don't really look natural afterwards. And you know how much I prefer the natural look and growth.